Welcome everybody. All right, so today is day nine in the 10 day prophecy over mankind, judgment over mankind. Day nine and day 10 is going to be quite rough. I'm not going to add much comment to it. Please, if you haven't watched the previous videos, you need to go watch them. All right, so I'm just going to jump straight into the Lord, the word of the Lord and give you some scriptures afterwards, and that's going to be it for tonight. All right, so for thus says the Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth, king of kings, lord of lords, yes, there is no greater. I am the great I am, and all of heaven and earth is in my hands. Therefore take heed, O man, for you have angered the Most High God with your rape and your murder, and your pillage of human life. For wherever you go, you stumble, for you hold no value in human life. Many of you do not even think twice to spill the blood of man, because you do not fear their maker, the God of heaven and earth and all that is in them, the God that has angel armies that cannot be numbered. The God who can take your breath from you as quickly as what I placed it within you. Yes, men do not fear me and therefore they hold no value in the life of men. For when you do not fear the creator, then neither will you fear to destroy his creation. Men have become murderers, filled with hatred, violence and every evil thing. You even take the life of little children without any remorse or any regret. How you can look upon the eyes of the innocent and snatch their breath from them. For that is pure evil in my sight. This grieves me, mankind, for their blood cries out to me night and day, saying, When will you avenge us, O God Most High, for those who dwell upon the earth and have done such evil against us? You snatched their life from them. You took away their breath from them. You two had no right. For which of you own any of those that I created? Are not all men mine? Did I not make them? Therefore they are mine. Yet you did not fear to put your hand against my creation. For you do not fear me, and neither do you fear to take the life of men. Yet many think that their own man, woman, and even children for their souls are not right within them. They desire power over man and find great pleasure to take life out of man. For they desire to be like a god, deciding when man can live and when man should die. But they do not know me, their creator, for I shall surely recompense their deeds upon their own head. And the blood that they spilt shall be recompensed, for their blood shall be spilt. For those who live by the sword must die by the sword. And even after death, their torture shall rise where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. They shall cry out, but there shall be none to save them. They shall even cry to me, but I shall not hear them. For neither did they fear when the one before them cried out to me. They snatched their life from them, regardless of my holy name and my creation. Men do not only hold no value for human life, but they have lost respect for every other life I created. I watch the suffering of the animal kingdom I created because of the heavy yoke of man and his carelessness. When I asked you to guard all life, when I declared that you shall care for all life and only take what you need and nothing more. All right, God is talking here. I just want to quickly add here. It's not that we can't eat meat. He gave us meat to eat. If you think, if you look at uh, um, Israel when they were taken out of Egypt, he rained down quail for them. That's meat. He himself fed them with meat. So he's not talking about eating meat here. He's talking about gluttony, about careless killing of animals for fun, for sport, or just because we can. You know, that's what he's talking about. Yet you have devoured the earth and made many animals go extinct because of your greed and your inability to care for all life. Yes, for all of my creation is mine. I created it and I care for every part of it. And I watch over all of it, for it is mine. I made it. Do you not take ownership, O man, 
of something that you make with your own two hands? Of course you do. Therefore, why did you not fear, knowing that I made all of this, and it belongs to me? It is mine. It has my fingerprint on. Every human being, every animal, every living creature has been made by me and me alone. Therefore, I will send a plague of utter darkness upon the earth. Yes, I will send the angel of death, and he will snatch the life of every man that did not regard human life, that did not fear their creator. They did not fear me. He will snatch the life of every soul that did not regard my creation and of every person who took more than what they needed. In their hunger for blood and violence and the power over life, it shall be a day of great wailing upon the earth as the life of men are snatched right from them. For the angel of death shall move swiftly upon the earth and snatch the life of every human that disregarded life that did not repent and receive forgiveness through the blood of my Son. For in him there is life, in him there is power over death, in him is the victory, O mankind. In him is the example, for he laid down his own life so that you might live. He sacrificed himself so that you may be free. He poured out his own blood for your sake, mankind. Yes, the Son of God came down and shed his own blood so that you may live. And yet man continues to take another's life and destroy all life upon this earth. Oh, my children, I will weep for the evil that man has done, for the rivers of blood that has been spilt carelessly and wickedly. For the corpses shall heap up as recompense for innocent blood, and everywhere you look there they will lie, and you shall not have enough space in your cemeteries to bury them. Men shall walk around and bury them wherever they can in order to cleanse the land of all the dead and the stench of death that shall arise upon the earth. But know this, O man, I have not acted without need, for many innocent cry out to me night and day. So many lives that have been taken by you, O man, the lives of little children, the suffering of so many millions upon this earth at your wickedness, O man. Therefore I must act. I shall judge you. I will send death upon your door, and you shall open it, and death shall enter, and there shall be no escape for you, mankind. The mouth of Elohim has spoken. Just for clarity, the Father says, Death shall come to all who has blood in their hands. Go with me to Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Not the big bang. Not some big bang. Out of nothing, suddenly life existed. All of these millions of different types of creatures and these human bodies that can think and speak and act. Definitely not a big bang. No, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night, so the evening and the morning were the first day. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters. He called seas and God saw that it was good. He made heaven, earth and seas and all that is in it. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. 
Then God said, let there, be no, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, seasons, and for days and years. He makes time. How does a big bang suddenly make time? It's absolute foolishness. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens and to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day, four days. All of that was done. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. He created every single one of them. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters in the seas. And let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind. Cattle. He made cattle. Cattle is good. And creeping things. And beasts of the earth. Each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind. Cattle according to its kind. And everything that creeps on the earth. Everything that creeps on the earth, snakes, everything. And God saw that it was good. Everything God made is good, necessary, wonderful, amazing, and it belongs to him because he made it. But then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God made the earth for us. To have dominion over the earth. To care for it. You know, when you're a king and you have a, a kingdom, you have dominion in your kingdom. What, is, what does that mean? Yes, you rule it. But are you going to just kill everything in your kingdom? Of course not. You're going to care for, if you're a good king, you're going to care for what's in your kingdom. You're going to care for your people, your land, infrastructure, all that goes with, being, with having a kingdom. You're going to grow and look after it and, and steward it well. That's what God expected from us by giving us the earth and giving us dominion over the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. Male and female. He created them. He created them. They don't belong to you. They belong to him. He made them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, every fruit, every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day, six days. And he made it all, and it belongs to him. Genesis 14, go with me there. This is the story of Cain and Abel. Okay, Cain kills Abel, and the Lord says to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? He says, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground, proving the blood of the innocent cry out to God. There is life in the blood. 
we read that in another part of scripture. There is life in the blood. There is something about blood that is 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 holy and cries out to God when it is spilt. All right, night and day for recompense. That's very interesting. All right, so go with me to Revelation 16, and we see this again mentioned, just in a different way. Revelation 16 says the following, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Exactly what the prophecy said. All right, Habakkuk 2 verse 4. Let's go there quickly. says the following behold the proud his soul is not right within him but the just shall live by his faith people who are proud their souls are not right within them all right go to matthew 26 52 It says the following, Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will die by the sword. What you do to others will be done unto you. Mark 9, 42. It says the following. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if he would have a millstone hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Listen to this. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If you've done anything, if your hand is sinning against God, it's better to cut it off, says Jesus. Just cut it off. It's better to lose a hand than to have your whole body thrown into hell. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. This is not some figure of speech. He means literally. <laughs> if your foot causes you to sin, he's trying to tell you how serious it is when you sin. Cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame rather than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. That's how serious it is. Exodus 12, 23. There's a story about the last plague. I'm just going to read a few scriptures for the Lord will pass through this to strike the Egyptians and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts the Lord will pass over the door not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you those who are covered by the blood in other words the blood of Jesus they um, have accepted the Savior they are covered by his blood they have been forgiven of their sins the destroyer will not enter your house the angel of death will not enter all right, it's important. Keep the Passover this year. Take communion. Make sure your heart is clean before God. Very, very important. Please keep that. Um, but Father says to us that those who are covered by the blood of the Lamb shall not be touched by this. Because how much greater is the sacrifice and the blood of our Messiah than the blood of a Lamb that saved the Israelites against against what was happening here. 
Verse 29, it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captain, captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. There was not a house where there was not one dead. All right. Second Kings nineteen thirty five. says the following. And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out, the angel of the Lord, <clears throat> and killed in the camp of the Assyrians, listen, 185,000 men. God sent an angel into the enemy's camp and this angel killed men. This isn't some strange prophecy. It didn't just happen with Israel. You'll see this happened again and again where God sent his angel. Remember, he's called the God of angel armies. He says that for a reason. He reminds us for a reason that he has angels that do his bidding. Here an angel, one angel is sent and he kills 185. Do you understand how many people that is? 185,000 in one night. One night. Isaiah 34. Let's go there quickly. Come near, from verse 1, you nations, and hear, heed you people, let the earth hear and all that is in it. The world and all things that come forth from it, for the indignation of the Lord is against all nations. He is fury against all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has given them over to the slaughter. Also their slain shall be thrown out, their sin shall rise from their corpses, the mountains shall be melted with their blood, all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Verse 5, my sword shall be bathed in heaven, indeed it shall come down, and on the people of my curse for judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Skip to verse 5. Oh, sorry, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. It is the day of the Lord's vengeance. All right, go with me to Second Samuel 24. David had sinned against God. He had counted the men of Israel. Why was that a sin? Because up until this point, David knew that their strength was in God, not in how many men they have. So by counting the men that he had, he was saying to God, my strength lies in my armies and not in you. Because it didn't matter how many men David had. God gave him the victory, not the men. So he sinned against the Lord. And the Lord sent a prophet and he said, choose three things because I'm going to punish you. Which one are you going to choose? And he chooses to fall in the, into the hands of God because he is merciful, he says. This is what God does. <clears throat> David said to Gad, verse 14, I'm in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning till the appointed time. From Dan to Beersheba, 70,000 men of the people died. And when the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, it's enough. Now restrain your hand. God has mercy in that moment. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of the Jebusite. 
Then David spoke to the Lord. When he saw the angel, David actually sees this angel who is striking the people. David sees it, the angel of death. Go with me to Acts 15, verse 29. It says the following. Now, this is the first commandments given to the Gentile church, all right? For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols and from blood. The Jews knew that they were not allowed to eat blood, but even the Gentile church, it's the second commandment given to the Gentile church, abstain from eating blood. There is something about blood, even the blood of animals. We're not supposed to eat it. doesn't mean we can't eat animals. But there are these, these, these laws in the Old Testament that says you're not allowed to eat the blood, drain the blood out. There's something about the blood that is in the life of animals and humans. All right. It's worth a, a very deep study, I think. All right. Like I said, it's not about eating animals. It's about indulging, overindulging, gluttony. You know, gluttony is sin. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> Verse 53. Says the following. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory over death because he has given us eternal life. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Revelations 21 verse 4 says the following, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. We shall surely have the victory over death. Hebrews 2, verse 14. It says the following. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brothers, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are being tempted. He gave us victory over death. He destroyed the power of death in our lives through the blood that he shed himself for us. So we have nothing to fear. Matthew 10, 28 says the following. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Ezekiel 14 verse 12. The word of the Lord came to me, 
saying, Son of man, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast from it. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, says the Lord God. If I cause wild beasts to pass through the land and they empty it and make it so desolate that no man may pass through because of the beasts, even though these three men were in it, as I live, that says the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, only they would be the, delivered and the land would be desolate. Or if I bring a sword on that land and say, sword, go through that land. And I cut off man and beast from it, even though these three men were in it as I live. They would deliver neither sons nor daughters. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury on it in blood and cut off from it man and beast, even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it as I live, they would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would deliver only themselves by their righteousness. Interesting. And then lastly, Jeremiah 19, verse 1. God judges wickedness. This is just scriptures that Father has also given me to give you. Um, it says the following. Go and get a potter's earthen flask and take some of the elders of the people and some of the elders of the priests. Go out to the valley of the sun which is by the entry of the potsherd gate, and proclaim there the words that I will tell you. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will bring such a catastrophe on this place that whoever hears of it, his ears will tingle because they have forsaken me and made this an alien place because they have burned incense in it to other gods whom neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah have known. And they have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. They have also built the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal. If you think this isn't happening today, trust me, it is. They are living sacrifices of children today to Satan which I did not command or speak, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem. I will cause them to fall by the sword, by their enemies, and by the hands of those who seek their lives. Their corpses I will give us meat for the birds of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. I will make the city desolate, and hissing, everyone who passes by it will be astonished, and hiss because of all its plagues. Okay, it gets really bad. I'm not going to read further. All right, point is, God judges, and especially when the blood of men and the innocent are spilt. All right, blessings. Shalom.